Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. We are at the Transformative Technology Conference. We are speaking with Ofer Leidner now. Hello. Hi, Alan. Nice Co-founder of Happify, great to meet you. Great to be here. I'm Thank really you. excited to chat with you. So even before we get to everything that Happify is doing, I want to know about you. How did, who are you? How did you even get into the space? So uh, my name is Ofer Leidner. I am the co-founder and president of Happify. I am based in New York, where home has been for me for the past 20 years. Uh, hard to believe. Uh, grew up in Tel Aviv, moved to the US. Uh, and for the past uh, six years with Happify. Uh, prior to Happify, I spent a decade building a fairly large casual gaming company. So, you mm -hmm. know, these experiences that uh, people spend too much time on, get addicted to, and ultimately leave them in a sense of pleasure, but not much more than that. Uh, so we got uh, a lot of people addicted to playing our games. And uh, I've done it for a decade and uh, prior to that in other companies. So I've been an uh, entrepreneur for the past 15 years. Mm. Um, how I got here is that following my experience with a gaming company, I had a strong sense that uh, we can boost something better with our expertise to yes. engage people. Yes. Uh, through digital devices, we did it at scale, over 60 million people on our gaming platform back in the days. Um, so I got really interested in kind of applying uh, principles of engagement, habit formation uh, with technology and evidence-based practice and try to help people live better. And now, that's so interesting that you did the transition from the, the just games that were maybe less beneficial for humanity in some ways, or beneficial in some ways, you know. You they learn, are beneficial, they are, they're you entertaining. You learn strategy and you learn teamwork and resource management in some ways and some, yeah, with some games. They're educational. I, would, I wouldn't uh, discount games completely. I think totally. they're, they're great. I love games. I'm a gamer by heart. Uh, but I do think that if you look at the trends of games and how uh, they're ultimately trying to create highly optimized uh, Habit Addiction formation like that are basically kind of uh, messing around with your dopamine yes, uh, yes. in various mechanics, uh, color palette, sounds, uh, uh, level progression mechanics. Yeah. Uh, we thought that this dosage that uh, uh, games are designed for today, creating a negative impact on kids. I see it with my own kids. Yes. Uh, and there may be something better that we could do with that skill set yes, uh, yes. to help people live better. Yes, and now, how did the transition come to Happify? How did, how did you go, I want to do this now? So we, uh, in 2010, uh, we, we, actually 2012, we started working on the idea, and we knew that uh, we're looking for a place where the engagement expertise and design, consumer-centric design, uh, would have a lot of uh, impact. Uh, living in New York, uh, you see the demand all day long around you. People are working uh, long hours, they're stressed, overworked. Uh, uh, a lot of folks on the street, unfortunately, with uh, emotional, mental health challenges. And for us, it was never a question whether or not there is demand out there for mm -hmm. this product. We just thought that uh, uh, people need different tools than what they have today to be able to get the support that they need. Uh, technology and mobile devices now allow us to put uh, incredible computing powers in the hands of people and use this computi computing power for good to do something that helped them live better. So that's kind of the idea. We had an, a thesis back then that if we match evidence-based practice that we got really interested in, uh, beginning positive psychology, cognitive behavioral therapy, mindfulness, mm -hmm. if we take all of these evidence-based interventions that has been sitting on the kind of academia, uh, academic shelf for years, but not reaching the mass market. If we take those and bring them uh, with our expertise and create engaging experiences, destigmatized experiences, people would want to consume them and they'll see the benefit. So this was a thesis. It took us mm -hmm. about uh, two and a half years to build the product and optimize the experience. Uh, uh, we, from the get-go, saw that we got on something that people want to use and want to use uh, at the dosage that we felt that is more reasonable to achieve the result and the behavior change that we wanted. Um, and from there, you know, we spent time building a consumer offering at first, uh, scaled it to three and a half million people. And, Whoa. Uh, and wow. What is, what was the offering, those consumer offerings? So it was a freemium subscription. Yeah. You could come in, we would offer you 
uh, uh, a variety of programs on the platform that allows us to essentially, uh, on a global basis today, because our platform is global, uh, screen uh, uh, and very quickly understand what brings you to the platform, provide you evidence-based programs on a wide array of topics from preventative well-being all the way to diagnosable mental health conditions and really let you do uh, these programs and interventions in design that is kind of is conscious of your uh, the amount of time that you have, your busy daily life, how you like to consume this. Uh, essentially apply a lot of the principle of designing good consumer-centric product, but kind of create something that also was measurably uh, delivering impact. So that, that's mm -hmm. kind of the first phase of uh, the progress. And then in mid-2000, uh, 16, we started getting approached by a large organization, uh, large employers, health plans, and other kind of population health management organizations. And they basically said, we have a lot of uh, people that might need this product. So fast forward today, we're working. Um, and tell us about the product quick. So Happify.com, when I go and I get involved with your service, yeah. I am starting to do what? So, so on the product, on the app, it's it's a product that's available on the site, apps native on all the platform, mm -hmm. and essentially it would come in, we would quickly screen and uh, and triage you into one of uh, over sixty different emotional health uh, programs that are delivering uh, highly interactive, evidence-based interventions to help you improve your emotional health. Interesting. So then, what are the what is this? What are how how like how long does it take for me to answer questions about who I am for you to get a good idea of these uh, metrics? So that that's a great question because you know one of the challenges is that you know uh, design wise we all eager to get as much data as we can, but engagement wise we know that if we ask you too many questions you're going to go away. So we have an assessment today that has nine questions that give us very strong mm. indications of where you are and what and brings you to the what platform. What are some of them? So some of the interesting question is, for example, um, um, do you feel sometimes that your life is darn boring? So we know that mm. when people are bored, uh, it's often a signal for uh, emotional health challenges. Yeah. Uh, uh, fatigue, also, yeah. same thing. Interesting, the bored question is very interesting because if you're doing something that you love every single day, there's no chance that you're bored. Um, and so, well, fatigue is another interesting one as well. It's because how hard are you, are you, do you ever relax your body? Do you ever meditate? Do you ever go to nature? Do you ever have blissful time with your friends and family? You know? Yeah, so, so right there from a, from a product design point of view, I think you lost many users because you asked too many questions. So we try to condense it to yes. a number of questions yes. that would give us a really strong signals. For example, um, how and, and I meant not so much about asking them those questions, but more so just uh, on a point of just emotional health and well-being. Yeah. If if you're if you're if you're answering the questions to fatigue and to boredom, uh, either you know wh wherever you're answering those questions. And I'm curious, are you doing it um, like on a one to ten scale, or do you? So there's scales that helps us understand and get the right signal where you yeah. are. Um, uh, another interesting question that we had on, on this assessment is how socially connected you are. Mm. Uh, we do know that one of the biggest uh, health epidemic nowadays is uh, social isolation. And Internet addiction too. Uh, yeah, but social isolation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But social isolation essentially, uh, you know, people get the antidote by fake social uh, interaction, yeah. but social isolation is a major signal for depressive symptoms, health symptoms. Yeah. Uh, so all of these questions, we put them on uh, nine question. Uh, we optimize this assessment to it's death. So cool. Uh, so cool. And then we, based on that, we'll prescribe you the program. Wide array of programs will get you into the program, and then you start doing these interaction in uh, interactive interventions. They all so, evidence based. So six, so six years, three and a half million people. Yeah, that's on the consumer side. That's on cons that's incredible. Yeah. You get it. High five. Good job. And it's then and then so a quick question is out of those out of the last 6 years, now how many people are you funneling into the next those those uh those inter those in interventions? Like which interventions are the most popular for the for the emotions that you're working with? So we have a variety of engines. We have over 3,000 different intervention uh, experiences, if yeah. you will. Yeah. Anywhere from um, 
uh, you know, classic uh, self-reflection, uh, journaling interventions, okay. interventions that are involving uh, um, light gaming, uh, audiovisual relaxation experiences. We're measuring uh, with sensors, uh, objective stress level, and then provide you deep breathing exercises, all the way to classic CBT intervention and cognitive uh, acceptance therapy and other accepted clinical uh, modalities. Uh, the unique way about how we're delivering it is that it, the principle is that it has to be something that people would want to do. Uh, so it's got to be fun, it's got to be engaging, it's got to be destigmatized, it's got to be readily available and personalizable. Yeah. And when you get all of these, you get really good uh, engagement and people use the product, which is what we didn't know when we started. It was a very interesting experiment. Hey, we put interventions, we digitize them and we create uh, fun experiences around them. Will people use? Will it be effective? Will we see the clinical outcomes? And uh, the first part of our journey, will people be willing to pay? And the answer was yes for all. That's so cool. Okay, so then, so then someone that is logging in goes through the process of answering the questions. They get an, as they get an assessment, you get their assessment. Can they access their assessment, like how you rank them in the different areas? Yeah, so, so the process of uh, self-care for your emotional health goes through awareness, right? You've got to be yes. aware about your condition. You've got to be um, uh, feeling comfortable to uh, look at the data. And we've created an interface that allows people oh, to cool. track how they're doing. Great. Unlike a uh, product that would kind of attack it uh, in a very negative, stigmatized way. Hey, if you're depressed, click here. Or you're depressed, we have news <laughs> for you. We have kind of destigmatized it and, you yes. know, called the assessment happiness score. A happiness uh, score. Happiness so score. So usually after I finish an intervention, how can you tell if I'm happier? Do you, do I retake the? So, so the, the clinical protocol, you come on board, we measure you day two and then every other week and we track the. Every other week. Every other and, week. And am I taking a different nine questions or same or the, the clinical assessment is different than the onboarding assessment yeah yeah it's, and then you're taking yes. that and every other week these oh, are the same questions the clinical assessment is how many questions is that well it depends on the type of clinical okay. on assessment uh, in more clinical settings when we work with health plans uh, you know we, we would use phq9 got two got seven these are very clinical assessment tools in more kind of environment that we want to do population health, so we want to engage many people and by destigmatizing the whole process, we would use happiness score. Happiness score is a clinically validated assessment, highly correlated with PHQ-9. And in fact, it has cool. been accepted by the, the uh, health plan as a clinical tool that they are using now, a, dis, a, a destigmatized engagement uh, clinical assessment tool that they're using. And then what what does the this is the when I when I'm when I'm doing the interventions do I do an intervention and then do I it depends on the intervention probably if I do it again later or not. So so we personalize the experience for you based on what we know works and kind of protocols uh, uh, that are working. We personalize it so you know if you come in and we, for example, putting you in front of intervention that is using uh, journaling, but guess what you didn't like journaling, there is no point in putting this intervention in front of you. That's exactly how we would send you away. If you are That's coming in and we ask you to meditate, but you're not a meditator, yeah. we lost you right there. So we yeah. would kind That's of personalize the tools on the yeah. journey. Um, and, and then the, around this kind of experience, you know, we have community experience, we have psychoeducational. Um, we, we kind of took a lot of the elements that make uh, consumer products successful with behaviors that we know people like. So people like Pinterest. Let's have people kind of pin happy moments and things that they develop emotional attachment. Let's uh, look at uh, support groups. So we know that when it comes to feeling stronger tied to a community, you get support. You know, the they Weight Watcher model, the analog model, can we bring it online and support people that want to use, uh, yes, yes. get some support and encouragement from a non-judgmental environment uh, and people that go through different situations like theirs or, or other, but they're all dealing with something. Does Happify also help uh, bring the communities of people in the local environments together that are working on? 
their so, emotional health and well-being? So not at this point. We are a, a self-care technology yeah, yes. tool. We okay. went out to solve the, uh, you know, the, the enormous challenge of access, convenience. Uh, yes. You want to kind of, you know, we have uh, one in five people dealing with mental health conditions here uh, in markets. Uh, other than the U.S., there are markets where there's simply a tremendous uh, challenge in, in getting the right resources, you know. So, yeah, so yeah. the only way in our mind to solve it is by good self-care solution. And a technology that can is easily accessible over the internet, just like that. Is, 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 how much is the cost of the self-care tool? So it depends where we're selling it, right? Yes. So we, we're selling uh, on the consumer side, you know, roughly speaking, $130 a year uh, okay. subscription, which if you Ten compare month, it, yeah. if yeah. you compare it to any other modality of care, if you look at uh, what it costs you if you go to your therapy or other, this is very way affordable, cheaper, yeah. yeah, way cheaper. It's the same price as a beer a month or a, or a Spotify, you know, there's, yeah. It's so I used to like the analogy of, uh, you know, a coffee, a, a Starbucks uh, once a month and you basically cover it and it provides yeah. you the, uh, the ongoing support that you need, whatever that is. Yeah, that's cool, that's cool. Now, where do you see this going in the next couple of years, increasing the, the amount of corporate clients that come on board as well as individual consumers? And what other technologies are you aiming to manifest? And how are you using all of the crazy uh, biomarker information that we're learning, all this kind of stuff? Yeah, so, so first of all, you know, we, well, we have uh, uh, a lot of people coming to the consumer offering. It's, it's essentially not where we're focusing our efforts. We're spending more time on working in the health plan, uh, okay. uh, self-insured employers environment. So we're kind of more s on the enterprise side. Mm -hmm. We seeing great opportunities with pharmaceutical companies on uh, digital therapeutics. These are components of the platform that would go through FDA clearance. Uh, and generally speaking, this is a giant opportunity. So there's a lot to do there. Uh, these are big markets, big problems to solve. Mm -hmm. And technology would be the one uh, to solve the pre uh, condition is that you can engage people and deliver the outcomes which we can. Uh, where this is all going, I think that uh, you know the data that is building in our systems allows us to start kind of creating machine learning and uh, uh, and interfaces that would allow us to even further improve the care. And you know we we, we have uh, uh, I do see a lot of opportunities to integrate AI. I do see a lot of opportunities to integrate. Uh, sensors that matter for your emotional uh, health. Uh, we're already doing it with um, heart rate variability, which is uh, uh, clinical measurement of uh, stress. Uh, sleep is very important. If you're sleep deprived, mm -hmm. uh, your entire emotional regulation mechanism is just not there. Uh, so we do see opportunities uh, with stress, sleep, and other sensors. And I think that our point of view about the adop adoption of uh, all these crazy sensors uh, we'd like to see uh, the market maturing and essentially the sensors that would become relevant uh, in our point of view would ultimately be commercialized by the hardware uh, companies. We're not a hardware company. We understand software and we want to interact with hardware that is widespread. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then the hardware that you interact with, thinking about like the neurotech hardwares and the yeah and the biotech hardware so yeah how how would you then uh that that would be i mean integrating with that is very interesting but then also trying to integrate with that and how you're working with the the health plans that is a whole new beast so so you have to you know there's a tendency to kind of innovate the next and kind of uh, stretch innovation uh you have to realize that the mechanisms by which uh, people getting the care uh, today in the healthcare system are mechanisms and environments that are kind of, they realize that innovation is important, but there's a pace of innovation that, can, uh, that they can digest. This is a large, complex healthcare system, uh, and, and you have to make sure that you innovate in a pace that you can commercialize. Uh, yeah. uh, you, and, and we've had the moments where we kind of had so many cool things that we did uh, where we say, this is too innovative. We, we should wait with that. It's just the, the, yeah. the system is not ready exactly. yet for that. So I like how you said innovate at a rate that can be digested. <laughs> Most people don't think about that. It's, that's, that's a good 
point as well is yeah get to the market as the market is getting ready for the services um, and there's a lot of red tape and bureaucracy to go through with uh, with health plans so I I also I'm very grateful that you're pursuing that route because it's a tough route to, to pursue and thank you for everything that you're doing this is a this is a really important project um, you guys everyone check out Happify links in the bio check them out um, over what a pleasure! Yes, thank you so likewise. Much. Thank yeah, you. This has thank been you, a huge Alan. Pleasure. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for talking to us on the show, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Like I said, check out the uh, write us your thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Um, embark on this. Go and manifest the future. Build the future. Build your destiny into the world. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Mm -hmm.